Okay, so moving into the final straight now, I just wanted to talk about social media and why it's so important that you start to think about social media, thinking about where the web is going. I'm always trying to pay, play the move, two or three moves ahead, uh, and social media is, is clearly where the game is at. Uh, Google is, is very important, uh, but we're seeing you know, a huge rise of attention getting put onto Facebook, and I think the importance of understanding social media and how you can use it to become a market leader is absolutely key. So what we're going to talk about to start off with is this idea of becoming a market leader in your, your market space. So what can we do that puts you on the cutting edge? Uh, and that, uh, that picture is a little uncomfortable for some people being on the cutting edge. Um, it's, it's, it's all about when you are the market leader, you can charge a premium price uh, and people will still line up to do business with you. Uh, there are so many fringe benefits that come from being the go-to guy in your particular niche. So we really wanna make sure that we do everything that we can to position you in that space. Uh, by, by using social media, I use it to help me to distribute content. Because a market leader, what do they do? They're consuming what's new, what's hot. They're on the cutting edge. They're the ones making the call as to here's what's happening, here's what's going to happen that's coming down the pipe. Uh, and it's all about using tools like Twitter and Facebook to get that message out to people, meeting them where they are and showing, you, uh, showing them that you're in front of that wave also gives you a chance to engage with clients. Uh, gone are the days of these big businesses where you, or maybe Google's probably a good example of businesses where you still can't get in contact with them, but I, I think now we're seeing a rise of a lot smaller and medium-sized businesses able to compete against uh, the big boys because they can really get in there and meet their clients where they are. And it's that whole transparency and keeping it real and that's all what I'm about it's all about here's the open book let the results speak for themselves so what's the secret for positioning yourself as a market leader I've identified a few a key elements that you want to start to think about and start to build these into your market and I've given some examples for each one. So the first one is uh, telling your story, and we talked about that in the web video and making sure it's in your autoresponder sequence, but that really is a, a great positioning tool, putting you as the market leader. When I talk about all of these different workshops that I've, I went to in my past and you know some of the successes that I've had and some of the people that I've been fortunate enough to meet and interview and all that type of stuff, telling that story, making it part of my story, really positions me as the expert because now I've got those runs on the board. And you do have that in you, you just need to draw it out and you might get someone's help to try and draw that out and really start to tell your story. If you look at someone like uh, Tony Robbins, he tells the same story whenever he starts his workshops and things like that. It's all about this down and out kid who was overweight and unhappy with life and was down in the dumps and then he had his breakthrough and he ran along the beach, beach and wrote down his goals and you know got really clear on what he wanted to do and the rest is history and he changed his life. Uh, it's that rags to riches, it's that uh, hometown boy you know, small hometown boy makes good. There's uh, a few different story elements that you can look at. In fact, there's a great book you should have a look at. It's by Robert McGee and it's called Story. And it talks about what are the different core stories. Like, I mean, there are only a few different styles of story that um, have, have sort of echoed throughout the ages. And pick what your story is. You know, are you, you know, a David versus Goliath type story? What's like, you know, um, I'm, uh, let's say Willows, for example, there are, uh, Virgin's doing it really well. They're, they're coming out with the Virgin gyms and they're saying, you know, it's the, the, what is the Virgin story? It's all David versus Goliath. It's all I see this industry that is being underserved and they're getting rolled. They're doing it with the gyms, they're doing it with the mobile phones, and they're coming out and going, you know, we're going to offer something different. You know, we weren't happy with what these people would, were providing, so we thought, well, we can do it better, and that's why we're here and we're providing, you know, no contracts for our mobile phones or no contracts for our gyms, that type of thing. That's their story. It's that, that David versus Goliath, us versus them. Uh, but there are a whole lot of different stories you 
you can find. So find your story and then start to, to tell it. Um, I tell my story at the start where, and, and it's just focusing in on the parts of that story. Like what, what was my story at the start? My story was uh, I ha had some good successes uh, early on, but then I got frustrated. Like I started attending all of these workshops. I started digging a whole lot of holes uh, and you know that, that got me frustrated because I started, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs really connect with that because you find entrepreneurs will just jump from one opportunity to the next. So that, that's part of my story. And then what was my breakthrough? It's almost like, you know, I was having these, I had a little bit of success, then it was really, really hard. Uh, then I had my breakthrough when I understood the way traffic worked and that's when things started to take off. So that's like I'm uh, showing you the way that I, I craft those stories. Um, and then we've also got uh, interviews are another great way to position yourself as an expert, a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, someone thinks that, you know, oh, if I'm interviewing the expert, it makes the expert look great, but it doesn't necessarily make me look great. But when I first got into the internet marketing space and we started setting up Melbourne SEO services, I started to interview the likes of Rich Sheffer and... Um, uh, Ed Dale, Yannick Silva, like I mean some of the biggest names in internet marketing, um, I got to interview them through uh, some connections and things like that uh, and it, it really positioned me, like I mean I got the halo effect that rubbed off on me, like now it, it shows that I'm sort of moving in these circles and that then starts to rub off on me and before you know it now people are contacting me asking me to do interviews with them and it all started off with podcast interviews so check out podcastinterviews.com uh, it's got over 35 interviews hour long zero pitch no opt-in like I mean you don't even have to opt-in just visit that website and you'll just see me interviewing tons of these different experts uh, trying to get all of their best stuff and when I interview someone I'm not one to sit there and uh, tell me your story of your life and you know they spend the first 45 minutes of uh, the interview telling me all about their story I'll do the research first tell the story for them so that way that piece is gone and then I just start asking the questions that I want answered and it's a great way as well uh, for me to get to get close and work with some of these guys you do, like I mean it opens some amazing doors um, you know I'm on their radar um, it's almost like I'm getting private consulting from them uh, that I don't have to pay for and the way that I position it with them is I'm going to help them get exposure to my market so that's what it's all about I'm, I'm helping them get exposure to my market um, next thing as well um, this is what experts do they pick a side uh, oftentimes it's good to say something controversial or take a hard line on something and just stand up and you say you know this isn't good enough or this is the way things are done so a good example of that in the stock market niche you know it helped sort of positioning with Stuart my business partner at the time and we got him to come out and basically say that uh, you know indicators are crap like a lot of people when they're analyzing stock market charts apply indicators and you know which indicator is perfect and when what's going to get you the best entry and what's going to get you the best exit signal and we just came out and said oh it's all crap because what indicators do is all they do is they uh, analyze the underlying um, uh, stock market price all it's doing is a mathematical equation on on the st stock market chart so really the most important thing is the chart itself not the indicator look at what the charts doing because all the other stuff is just uh, interpretations on what's happening to that underlying chart moral of the story we took a very hard line and said that uh, you you know indicators are crap don't worry about using them just focus on price and we did that by design because it created a a discussion and you know, I mean people were, some people were outraged some people agreed like I mean we just created this stir and it created you know a, a lot of attention that ended up coming on us so it's good to pick a side um, the other thing uh, experts run events so where you can you know whether you you, you get on some sort of speaking tour or you get someone else to interview you or you know this may or may not suit you and your business some people don't like to do that uh, but putting yourself in that limelight really can help position you to be the expert and I'll show you how to do that with uh, press releases in the next uh, session make sure you document your results which I've been talking about all the way through here 
Creating your own language is another one for really good for positioning you as the expert. So when I use my autoresponder sequence and we're speaking to my stock market guys, you know, I'll talk about the TYTP, and we talk about the MPSG, and we talk about, you know, these are all acronyms of our product where they know what they are and it's almost like we have our own language and they'll email me through my customer support using my own language. So that really positions me as an expert because it's like we've got our own little language and we're, we're talking our own language together. So, so that works really well. And then obviously anything that you can do to help get your content syndicated. So whether it's through media, public speaking, whether it's through article distribution, do whatever you can to make sure that you get uh, you know, featured in and, and references and things like that. So th that's what it's all about. We're, we're positioning you as an expert. So how do we keep you on the cutting edge of what's going on? Um, you want to have a look at, uh, if you've got an iPhone, I use an app called Reader, uh, but you can use Google Reader, whatever it is. What I would start to do is pick out what are the biggest blogs in your industry. So what are the, the blogs where people are talking about what's going on in your business? And you can get uh, what's called an XML feed, it's just a, a, a link, a URL, you copy and paste that into your Google Reader uh, and what it does is it just collates uh, all of those blogs into one place. So instead of having to look at 500 different websites, you can go to one place and read all of the news about what's going on in your industry. And I'll give you, let's actually jump over and have a quick look. So. Okay, so this is in my Google Reader. So basically under here, like I've put it into different categories on the left here, but basically I've got like a little SEO section and you can see here are all of the different websites that I've got under SEO because I'm trying to keep up to date with what's going on in SEO. So I put them under this one category and then on my iPhone I can have a look and I get all of these, these are like little news reports. So I don't, I don't read the newspaper like most people read the news, I, I read it through Google News because I can really tailor what news I'm consuming like certain things aren't of interest to me and other things are much more important so I want to know what's going on in SEO I want to know what's going on in web 2.0 I've got my own sites and things like that so basically I'll sit through on my phone and I can scan through what's going on now how can you use that information it's great for putting it in your own blogs it's great for retweeting it out like it shows that you're on the cutting edge because what does a market leader do a market leader breaks news as news is breaking they help disseminate that info this is important you need to be listening to this so that's that's why uh, I do it and it, it's great another way which we talked about uh, is, is making sure that you use Google Alerts so either through Google Alerts uh, you can set whatever your big keywords are that are most important to you set it in Google Alerts so you get notification as it happens you can react to that information now we got to um, the Old Spice commercial probably a little bit too late. Um, I don't know when we did that. That was probably a good few months ago now when we launched that Old Spice parody. Um, but the video for Old Spice had been around. That's probably, it was a year old by the time that we got to it. We still got some really good uh, watches for it and, and some great feedback. Uh, but what would have been better is if as that was breaking, if we did the parody then, then we would have just we would have rode in the slipstream of that that video and it blowing up and everybody getting media attention and all that type of stuff. So you want to try and make sure that that's why you use Google Reader and alerts. If you can create content around what's happening, that's that's really where you 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 get the benefit. It's almost like they say in the stock market, all boats rise on a floating tide. So this idea of everybody can make money when the stock market's going up. Similarly, like, I mean, you just get dragged along with it. If there's media attention going on or something like that and you're writing around that topic, you just get dragged up with it just because you're focusing on an area that's growing. So that's, that's how I keep on uh, in front of that. Um, another takeaway here as well uh, is I don't think social media is for everyone. And if you remember back at the start of the, the day, I talked about this idea of... Uh, what I'm going to show you today, I've given it to you in the order in which I think you should approach it. So start off with uh, usability, move to SEO, make sure that you get your 
uh, web video right and your autoresponders right. Get all this stuff right first before you flip into social media. Because um, you want to make sure, like, I mean, social media, web video, all that type of stuff, it's all about drawing people back to your website so you can capture their details and you can continue to market to them. So you don't want to go out there and drive a whole boatload of traffic. They get there and then you never make anything of it. So just make sure that your website is as sticky as possible first. Uh, and also, it just feels like the buzzword. Everybody's talking about Twitter, they're talking about Facebook, and that's why they feel like that they need to be on it. Um, my dentist, a little while ago, uh, he said, oh, you wanted to get on, on Facebook, and I said, oh, look, you've got to do this, 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 and this, and this before I'd even consider getting on Facebook. Uh, and then we had to come through the idea of, well, why do people actually use Facebook? You know, I don't think a friend, someone is going to come and like a page uh, just because it's a dentist like I mean there needs to be a reason to engage it's it's a social community so it's not right for every business uh, and you need to think about the way to engage with it correctly to get the most out of it uh, there are some drawbacks like there's uh, ongoing management required Facebook and Twitter it's not about setting up an account and going I have a Facebook and I have a Twitter and now I'm done it's about ongoing communication because what did I talk about before when I was saying about what what is uh, what, what are these uh, social media mechanisms used for? It's about disseminating content. It's about engaging with your community. So you need to make sure that uh, it gets that ongoing management. If someone sent me a message on Twitter and then I didn't ever get back to them, I'd probably end up burning that client. Like they've sent a message to me, it's like they tried to talk to me and I didn't respond to them. Or you'd think they're rude, I'm not going to do business with them. So that's why it's important that you need to engage on it. Um, the other thing that makes social media hard, uh, and it's hard to quantify the return on investment, uh, and I don't think that's a reason not to do it. I think Gary Vinichuk talks about in his latest book, uh, The Thank You Economy, this idea of where business is going. And it's all about businesses that build up this brand equity and engaging and communicating with the client and really getting the bonding and actually caring. And he always says, you know, actually give a shit about your client because most businesses don't actually care about their, their, their client. Uh, it's just about making the next quick buck. So... That's what makes social media a little bit hard, but I, I think you still need to embrace it, especially what's about to come down the pipe. Uh, so it's better to be in front of that wave, meeting the clients where they are, showing them that you care. So how do I use each of the different tools? So Twitter, the way that I use Twitter for me, it's all about engaging with clients, having very quick communication. Twitter is where I inform them about what's going on. So I'll retweet stuff. You know, if you were following me on Twitter, there's my Twitter there. But, you know, last night when I rocked up uh, uh, in Toowoomba, I said, you know, pumped about giving the, um, the Competition Crusher uh, workshop tomorrow. Um, and, and I, I like, I mean, that, that's what I use it for. Um, I use it for sharing uh, industry news. Uh, the other thing as well, some people do like follow. If anyone follows you, they'll follow them back. Um, I tend not to do that. I, I took this lead, I suppose, from Ed Dale. This idea of uh, the reason I use Twitter, I want to use Twitter the way it was designed, which is I follow people that I want to keep on in touch with. So if, if I want to know what, you know, I, I mainly use it for internet marketing, but I mean, uh, you'll use it for your industry if there are industry people who are on Twitter in your space. Um, I'll follow the people that I want to keep up to date with the news that they're breaking, uh, and I won't follow back the people who follow me, but I'll, I'll very much engage with them though. If people, they call it at reply, if people write the at symbol and then my name, that's like they're talking to me, uh, and then I'll talk back to them. So. That's the way that I use Twitter, and I think uh, that's the way that it was meant to be used, uh, rather than following everybody back. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think if you start to use that, like for me, tw Twitter's good. The other thing that's quite useful is you can do Twitter searches, so you can find out what conversations are going on, and then you can join that conversation. So you can do searches, like, I mean, let's say someone was talking about construction, um, you can do searches on Twitter for discussions about construction, find out where the conversation is, and then join that discussion. Now, this comes back to what social media is all about. Social media, it's not all about pitching your product, it's not all about here's what I'm trying to sell, it's, it's like you're in a party 
and you first need to engage with them, have a conversation before you start uh, pitching whatever it is that you're looking at doing. So don't just get on to Twitter and then spam every second day, you know, here's my latest offer, here's my latest offer. No one's going to want to follow you, no one's going to want to engage with you. So that's why you want to make sure that you start to disseminate that news so people want to follow what it is that you're doing to stay on that cutting edge. Uh, then how do you use Facebook pages? Now for Facebook pages, uh, you know, you can set up your own Facebook profile and that's what I did uh, when I first started and Sally's going to get started on Facebook really soon. Um, I set up my own personal uh, Facebook account, uh, so for, for just like davidjennings.com and in the early days I would friend anyone. So. This is before I jumped on using pages, particularly with all my trading guys. I'd say, yep, come and, and join me over on Facebook. And the reason I did that, well, it was well before they even had pages, but I did it from a bonding level because I wanted them to see the lifestyle that I was leading, um, like I mean, showing, like I mean, it was all about posting up photos of things that I was doing, cool stuff, um, so that they could sit there and they, they'd see what was going on in my life and bond with me at a very different level to what they were getting in the email. So it was much more personal, so it was more connecting with me. So that's, I, I did that initially, uh, and I think looking back now, I, I try and channel. I, I want to try and keep Facebook more so for people that I know, because I mean it's quite good to use it for friending people that you actually know, and then you log in and you see your activity feed, see what's going on, and engage with them that way, and then use things like pages for more of your personality um, or your profile, like your your, um, your 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 public persona or a business name or something like that. So. For Melbourne SEO, we ended up setting up the SEO Mastermind. Now, the reason I went for the word SEO Mastermind as opposed to Melbourne SEO Services is who wants to kind of become friends with a, a company? Like, I mean, you've got people out there who like Coca-Cola and stuff like that, but I wanted them to feel like they were joining a mastermind group, a community, uh, and that's what Facebook's all about. It's about that community. So that's why I chose that name, SEO Mastermind, um, as opposed to uh, Melbourne SEO Services, because uh, I want them to, you know, join with me and, and know it's not just about me pitching; it's about me bonding with them. And this comes back to this idea about why are you people using Facebook? And this is where so many people get it wrong. They're just they're using Facebook to spam up uh, little things they might have done. You know, sometimes it's good to add in your blog posts and things like that. But it might be making an offer, making an offer. People don't go on Facebook to get pitched offers. They go to engage in a community and see what friends are up to, and you know, discuss you know the latest gossip, that type of thing. So, what do we do for Planet Thirteen? You know, if a band's um, about to tour in Australia, we'll ask them. We're not saying, "Hey, go buy this band T-shirt." We're saying, um, "Oh, did you see such and such as touring? Are you going to this gig?" You know, the last time that we saw uh, such and such touring, you know, Guns and Roses was the last time they were here. I saw them in '89, or whatever the case may be. That's that's the way that we're using it and engaging in a community fashion where we're talking about what's going on and having a discussion as opposed to just pitching offers. And then every now and then you splice in your offers. So the way to use Facebook and use it well, like uh, one of the coaching clients, that photography client, um, the way that he's used it and we're using it very effectively is uh, he's running competitions where it's about uh, who's the cutest baby so in a particular area and he's getting people to upload their baby photos uh, uh, into uh, like onto his Facebook page to enter the competition he'll tag that photo and basically the winner is the person who gets the most amount of likes so if your baby photo has the most amount of likes you end up winning some free baby shoot or something like that but what he's doing is he's getting all of these people to submit photos where he'll end up tagging them in it. So what does that mean? That'll appear in their feed and all their friends will start to see it. And then they'll say, well, I want to win this competition. And they'll tell all their friends to like that photo. And then it kind of starts to spread a bit virally. Because what sp spreads virally on Facebook? Photos do videos do like I mean that's why people hop on Facebook and start to share content so that's the way that you want to start to think and then how do we make money out of that so he's got a little competition running then he's also collecting the people who enter into this competition 
and then he's making follow-up marketing offers to them. So that's, this is how you do it. Um, you know, and we're, we're doing some similar stuff with, uh, I talked about Planet 13 and uh, also the dentist. So this is that coaching client where we, we sat down. So I, I have this coaching thing. I usually only take on, I've got about five clients that I do at any one point in do- time and I always narrow it down into one day because I'm busy building my own business but I actually find it keeps me very sharp to work in other businesses to see what's going on. So in one of our coaching sessions, we planned out this and this is like a strategy of what happens when someone uh, engages in his services and in Facebook and what's the funnel? What? How do they flow? through his business so we either get them from Facebook or the website or maybe through some joint ventures we try and if it's um, through the website we funnel them into the autoresponder so he's got an autoresponder sequence going Uh, if it's in Facebook and we generate them through one of these competitions he follows up with a free coupon so basically everyone who didn't win in this competition he can follow that person up and say hey you didn't end up winning the cutest baby competition but uh, here is a $200 voucher off your next photo shoot uh, when, when you come and get a photo with us and you know you get some baby photos and he'll put together a little package. So he puts together a coupon and then follows up with them after that. Now the, the process, once they do that, they get their coupon, they come in for a planning session, they have their shoot. Now after the shoot, what's he got? He's going to get a, an iPad when they come in for their shoot and they're going to check in. He'll, while they're waiting in the waiting room, he'll give them the iPad and just say, oh, you know, if you want to check in, you know, he'll have Facebook loaded so that way they can uh, check in. And what does that do? That then appears in all of the friends' feeds. Like, I mean, everybody who's a friend of this starts to go, oh, you these off to have this photography shoot or something like that. So it starts to engage it that way. And and then he does the edit and then they come back for the viewing and what happens on the viewing when they view he uploads the video uh, the images to Facebook now they've already liked him in the previous shoot session so he now tags them in the vi- in the uh, photo what happens the photo then appears in the feed everybody's like oh that photo shoot, shoot looks amazing that you know the baby looks really really good starts to spread virally uh, engagement starts to happen then we've got a plan is after maybe sort of 10 or so comments we're going to follow up and make them an offer where he'll go um, you know hey it's uh, Brent from Capture Imaging Photography just uh, thought I'd touch base um, and say you know such and such just had a photo shoot and we'd like to give a special offer to any uh, any friends of uh, Jamie's she can come in and uh, just quote this unique code and then we'll also give you a coupon and then that's new ways to start feeding into the top Uh, And then so they're there, he'll make sure he grabs a testimonial from them, Um, he'll give them, we talked about some extra coupons that he can give away, Uh, this is like a referral strategy, so that way he gives two $50 vouchers that he can give to them and they can just hand out to friends. Um, And then when they come to pick up, um, they go into an autoresponder uh, sequence, so they come for the viewing and then they actually come back when they're printed out. Um, he puts them into an autoresponder sequence where he follows up with them and says thanks for coming blah 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 blah. and then the final step is he also does uh, an Anomoto which um, is a way for creating video content so he takes all of the photos that he's done on the day loads it into this slideshow adds some audio in the background uploads it to Facebook tags them in it and it appears again in their feed and it all happens that way like I mean that's That's the way you should be using social media. That's creating a strategy and that's creating something that works and something that, like, I mean, that's... That's, that's what Facebook's all about. It's about video, it's about photos, it's about engagement, it's about getting likes, it's about getting people to share that content. So, um, I want to talk a little bit about the future and even though I said it's not right for all businesses, we can see some changes already starting to happen in the web. Um, there's a great book uh, by a guy called Eric Qualman called Social Nomics that uh, I actually interviewed the guy on, on podcast interviews, so you can hear the interview with him. And basically, what he talked about was this idea that the web is changing and what is more relevant to you as a user? Let's say you're on Google and you're searching for accommodation uh, in Europe because you're about to go on a holiday. Uh, what's more important to you? Is it a robot that serves up a result based on an algorithm, uh, Google, or would it be if 
uh, your, your friend went and travelled to Europe and they said, oh, here's where I stayed, here's where I recommend. So obviously, the latter is going to be uh, more important to you because you trust the word of your friend more. Like that, that is, is worth so much more. And that seems to be that the way the web is starting to change. And we saw Facebook, they came out with the like button and you know, there's a lot of speculation as to whether or not uh, Facebook would be able to use that data to create their own search engine. And uh, what's happening now, they ended up doing that deal with Bing that I talked about. So we're starting to see already uh, when you like a page, it is starting to influence the search results. It's not happening in Google, but Google's starting to take into account things like Twitter and Facebook and things like that. We are just, it's just starting now. So we mark my words, this is the way that the web's going. So what you can do to build up your social community, build up your expert status, become an expert in your niche, will pay dividends long, like long into the future. Um, so we wanna make sure that we really start to get on Facebook, build up that community, um, we start to use the like button, we make sure that we get uh, Twitter into our business as well. Uh, I think uh, Google, uh, when they found out, like Facebook started to give them a little bit of the spooks, it was about, uh, 18 months ago, I think, they went together and they got 50 of the biggest heads of Google to come together and talk about the future of the web and what were the risks that Google was facing. And Google said pretty much it's Facebook and it's the way the social web is going and, and that's going to be the next significant change because that's what's most relevant. Having search results tailored to you and your situation, that's, that's it's a little bit big brother, someone watching over you, but really that's ultimately what you want anyway, not the big brother part, but having your marketing that's very much tailored to you. Uh, and, and you see that when I talked about Amazon earlier today, this idea when you get an email from Amazon and they'll tailor that marketing to you and they'll say, here are some other books that you might be interested in reading based on previous searches. Like, I mean, that's the way that everything's heading together. So Google had this meeting, they came up with a project, they, they named it the Emerald Sea. That was kind of like their top secret project name. Uh, it evolved, that, like I mean, Google's tried to come into uh, social media. They had a the thing they called Buzz, which kind of uh, died um, quite quickly. Um, they, uh, they also had Google Wave. There's a few attempts. Now, this, the last most recent shot, which has just happened now, like in the last couple of weeks, is Google Plus. And this is Google betting the farm on their social media. Now, They've, they've created, you know, what they're trying to make is a Facebook killer. Uh, at the moment, it's only been out for a couple of weeks. They had 10 million people sign up in two weeks. Uh, it seems to be getting a bit of ground. Uh, I, I don't know whether or not Google Plus is going to take off or not. That's here nor there. Um, the real key takeaway here is Google, with some of the smartest minds in the world uh, working for them, have said, this is where things are going. We need to get on this now or Facebook is going to come and kill us. Just, you know, you might think, oh, who could knock Google off? Like, I mean, a few years ago, like, there was a thing called MySpace that you might have heard about, and that was one of the first real well-known social media sites. And everybody thought, no, nah, MySpace is not going anywhere. Almost overnight, Facebook came out and just absolutely crushed them. And, and I think Google's a bit worried that there's the potential there for uh, this data that uh, Facebook's collecting to just make them a more attractive destination for the user because it's more relevant to them. So they came out with this Google Plus thing. It's still only in the early days, but we know that it's already starting to influence search results and we're starting to see social media filtering through to the search results. They came out with a thing they called uh, authorship. This was announced like two days ago. This is kind of like super, super cutting edge stuff um, where now uh, you can assign an author to certain posts. So you'll be searching in Google and a head will appear next to the result. So you'll see the result and then you'll see a little head of the author just next to it. And if you can imagine the way that that would influence search results because 
the eye is attracted to the photo, they'll see the photo, it's going to make it much more interesting to create, uh, like a much more uh, interesting user experience because someone in position three potentially might not, they might get more clicks than in position number one because they've got a photo next to it, the eye goes there, they end up clicking there and then that photo is linked to their Google uh, Plus account. So that way you see the photo and then you can click on their little profile to find out more about them. So what's Google doing? They're now, it's almost like they're giving special preference or weighting to someone who's on Google Plus. So it's, I, I can imagine more and more businesses will want to jump onto Google Plus because if they don't, their competition will. And even if their competition's in position number three, they've got a head next to it and it's gonna increase the click-through rate. Um, and they're also integrating, like, I mean, the plan is to integrate this into everything that Google does. So uh, in Google, in Gmail, you'll start to see in the top right-hand corner, they just announced this as well, you've got uh, a little app that appears in the right-hand corner where now you'll be writing an email uh, to someone. It'll recognise who you're writing the email to and then it'll pull up their little uh, Google Plus account and you can find out what your friend's doing. So you'll see the status update. Because Google Plus, it's very similar to... Facebook. Like when you look at it, it looks like Facebook. You can upload photos, there's activity feeds, um, there's a few changes that they've made. You know, you can start to add friends into circles now. So instead of having all of your friends on one face, like uh, in your one Facebook account, they have, Google Plus has this thing they call circles, where you might put all of your friends into one, you might put acquaintances into another, you might put business associates into another, so that way you can group who sees what. So that way you might have gone out and had a really big night on the weekend with some buddies and you don't want your mum to see the photo of you lying in your own vomit in a gutter somewhere. So you, you, you'd you upload that just into this circle and then your mum can't see that one. So like, I mean, that's the way that the circles are going. And they've brought a few different other elements like that uh, into it. But I think the real takeaway here is that that's the way that the web's going. So you want to make sure that you start to engage in this uh, because it's not going anywhere and it's already starting to affect uh, so, uh, SEO. So from here, what do you do? The action plan. The action plan is you need to start positioning yourself as an expert, ASAP, and I gave you those strategies to do that. Uh, then you want to start watching your market. So set up your Google alerts, uh, find out where the conversations are going on on Twitter, uh, make sure that you uh, set up your Google Reader to know exactly what's going on, register your Twitter and your Facebook. At the moment, don't stress too much. Like I said, you've got plenty of other things to keep you busy before you really start getting into it. Uh, because first we want to get everything else lined up, but then when you're moving into the marketing side of things, that's when you really want to start to look at that social media and start engaging with your clients. So seeing what you can do to encourage them when they, you know, if you've got a, a local cafe, then someone comes in, get them to, you know, put your Facebook uh, URL up there so they can like your page, get them to, to check in, get them to follow you on Twitter because, you know, once a week you give away a free coffee or something like that. I mean, you can do little fun things like that to try and get them engaging with you or how can you create the competition like we did with uh, the uh, photography guy uh, my coaching client Brent and like I mean how can you do things like that to use Facebook for what it's actually planned for mm -hmm.